Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage. On a gloomy overcast, now getting dark Saturday afternoon. It is quite warm, over 40 degrees, not bad for mid-January. And this afternoon, um, a few hours into working on my race 55 Chevy chassis. It, uh, if you haven't followed along and I need to make a playlist for it on my channel page, Mountains Garage. So I will get on that, so they'll all be grouped together. Most of my other videos are. And again, uh, I've talked about it some, but the chassis is beautifully done. Up to this point, it was built between 1992 and 1995. A few things have changed since then. I think 25.1 SFI was the only spec back then, probably. Now there's 25.2, 25.3, and so on and so forth. Uh, I had the 25.1 paperwork from when I fixed my orange Camaro. And once you pay your $41, that's the current price for this 25.2 manual, and they're all, they all cost the same, I believe. Once you have bought this, you can go on the SFI website and read all the updates. You can read the updates anyway. And I could have pieced it all together, but I'm not going to make a mistake for the cost of $41. So at least I have the book and it calls out all the tubing sizes and all the differences. And it's quite a read. It's a difficult read sometimes to try to interpret what you want to accomplish. But I'm going to take it one bar at a time. And I've already uh, mocked in my number one bar, which is uh, typically the first one you lay in the chassis. It's the one the main hoop sits on. It goes across the back under your seat. And mine was allowed to be three-piece because my inner frame rails are H and 5 eighths. It's all in here. And I've got that mocked into place. My next, that wasn't much of a worry. I have had to contact them using their terminology. I wanted to make sure it didn't have to be coincident, which means that they line up, mine are offset about the width of the tubing. And the Division One NHRA tech guy said that my interpretation was acceptable. Okay, shouldn't be a problem. So we're past that one and I uh, get good advice. I'm gonna probably Put some diagonal supports anyway, so overkill is always your friend, but it has to uh, meet the pitches and criteria that are in this book. So today, my next biggest worry was the 6C bar, and I'm going to pause the camera and point it out so we're all on the same page when we're talking. Hang on. I'm quite sure I'm breaking all the rules by showing you the pitches even. I don't know. Maybe not. So the only concern when you have your chassis inspected, they only care about this much of the car with a few exceptions. So this is an area of focus and today we're working with 6A, 6B, which are already present on my car and 6C was not there yet. In this case, they are coincident using their words. And this 6D, this one going forward, is to protect your feet with the whichever pedal pushes down the furthest. They just want to make sure you're not looking like you're riding a ski lift and your feet are out non-protected. Now this is the minimums. The way my car is set up and we'll get to that, I'm going to actually add another bar. So again, these are the minimums. You can add as much as you want. I mean, you don't want to make the car as heavy as cast iron, but you can do some stuff. So let me show you a few more things about the 6C bar. And I'm going to add that in this perspective, the three choices, I believe my head, my helmet is going to be fully ahead of the main hoop. So I'm figure A for most everything I'm doing. So in the other picture, it was coincident straight across. You're allowed to set it back or curve it. And there's different rules for each one, but you could set it back a maximum of 16 inches. Unfortunately, in my car, that still puts it right in the middle of the transmission pan, effectively doing me no good. And the way the pedals are already installed and everything, it would be a 
Schmazel, as they say in Canada. <laughs> or at least some people do. When I got the 55 home and first looked the chassis over, I was a little nervous at first because typically the number one bar, which is what we started this conversation with, is one piece. But fortunately, they've allowed some differences. And this is a little picture that saved me, saying I could have a three-piece as long as my inner frame rails were inch and 5 eighths, 083, and read the note. So, yes. But my question was if they had to line up exactly, and I'm told they don't necessarily have to, or at least it isn't written that way. So my available options for the 6C bar is to go straight across in the chassis. In this case, I have to go under the front of the transmission and clear the torque converter, and in that area, of course, I have the flex plate, and I also have my overflow catch can. It's potentially a tight little area, and I don't want to build anything that's going to make it difficult to work on. But fortunately, you're allowed, using the proper flanges, they have to be chrome molly, and the 3 8 bolts times 4, and the hole has to be 3 8 in from the edge. I bought these from uh, Applied Racing Technology, same place I bought all the tubing, and I shined them up this afternoon and getting them ready to weld. Comes with all the bolts and everything, that's really nice. So my other option, again, is to set it back a maximum of 16 inches, which in my case does me no good, the way everything is placed in the car, the engine placement, it's pretty much in the middle of the transmission pan, and that's just not gonna work. Now, I need a removable cross member on the back of my transmission, and that's typically what you could do in this situation, but my engine would have to be further forward, and that's not something I want to do. So, And if you offset it like that, and you can put little stubs sticking off the chassis and have the middle of the cross member drop out, but you have to run diagonals that start back where the 6A and B bar is, and you have to go back and intersect on the frame side of the removable dropout. So you gotta run two 18 inch pieces of tubing. That's three feet of tubing if you count both sides. So that's weight. And I really, it's going to make everything tighter around the transmission and it's not gonna work in my situation anyway. So that is pretty much not an option. So my concern was having enough room under the torque converter and, and or, if someday I do put a bell housing in there, it looks to me, and I'll show you on the chassis, I've cleaned it up some now, I should have showed you beforehand, but it looks like originally the, the tubing was running all the way across under the engine, and then when they started placing the Hemi and stuff in it, it looks like they just cut it out of there with a plan of putting it back in somewhere, just which what exactly what I'm doing now. It has to be there, so. So let's go down and look, take a look at the car. Well, before we do, so the other day when I finally got the tubing bender functional, I practiced on my first drop cross member. And you have to run it pretty long. I mean, you waste some tubing, but you have to keep the tubing in the shoe as you're bending. So I learned I can be a little shorter than this, but not much. The second one I made, I learned that the initial drop had to be more. I actually went like 44 degrees with spring back, like, like 40 degrees, and then I went 20 on either side. We talked about that yesterday. Knowing what I know now, now that I've mocked it up, it clears. But if I had given it more drop in the middle, I would have been better off. So now, let's go look at the mess I've created. So I had a dummy Turbo 400 case in there and I cleaned up the chassis and I shortened the cross member to the point where it just sits in there by itself without the bracket yet, which makes it handy for mocking it up. But I didn't dare to go forward. Now, at least if I totally made a mistake and it ran into the torque converter, I could just make a new center section, but I don't want to do that. So fortunately, I have my complete transmission and torque converter just sitting on top of my toolbox next to the 55 Chevy. So out came the dummy case and in went the real transmission, which also answered another question, the, my beloved Proform dipstick, locking dipstick, looked like it was gonna be really close between the motor plate and the firewall, but it clears and I'm able to jack the transmission right up into place. 
with the dipstick bolted to the transmission. That's the way I like to do it. So let's go down and take a look. And here we are under the old 55. Again, there's my dipstick, which clears just barely. So these are the stubs of my six A and B. I just squared them up because it looks like they cut them off of the sawzall. And now you can see I got about an inch under the torque converter still. That's a 10 inch converter. I don't envision running one much bigger than that. And if I happen to get some giant billet unit, again, I can always make a new center section. It's plan B, but this is my most viable option. So now I need to mock up the flanges and weld them in place. With the 6C bar bolted in place, I don't think I really even need to unbolt it to pull the transmission out. So it has occurred to me that I could right now bend one up that's deeper, but I just don't really see the reason at this point in time. I think I'm gonna run with it. So moving forward, when I continue to shoot videos about the Race 55, and there's going to be many between now and the point that it actually you know, moves under its own power. So I don't want to leave the, you know, leave you hanging. Well, we didn't actually finish the installation of this bar. However, today I am out of time and the video is already over 10 minutes and YouTube's a fickle beast. And if I put out a video and nobody watches most of it, they dock you. <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch you put out a video and they rank you one to 10 in the last 10 videos you put out. And you know, you put out a good one, like I put the transmission, how much does it cost the other day? That was number one video of the last 10 I've done. And you watch your daily you know, allowance go up and everything's great. And then I put out the one about the tubing bender and that was the nine of 10, you know, they. Re they, they nail you right off the bat. They tell you, well, that one wasn't so great, Sean. People didn't like that one. But hey, you got to ride the wave. So <laughs> it is what it is. So in the next video, this bar should be tacked into place. I also got to reposition my welders. Or we I got two TIG welders. I don't know if I'll have one down there and one up here. I only have one bottle. So probably the big red one will go down there and... Uh, I don't know. We'll work that out. If it wasn't so cheap, I guess I'd have a second bottle. So <laughs> Enjoy your Friday night. Friday night. Enjoy your Saturday night. And uh, I'm going to go up and get warm and uh, think about my next move. So take her easy. Talk to you soon.